Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, gentlemen. Welcome to the open day of the European School of Physiotherapy. My name is Bas Moet. I'm the program coordinator and I would like to welcome you again to the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences. If you're wondering where I'm, um, why I'm wearing a microphone and why there's a camera over there, that's because we're also now live on YouTube. So everyone that is watching us there, uh, also welcome. Um, for some of you here, welcome to the Netherlands. That's maybe the first thing. Uh, welcome to Amsterdam and uh, like I said already, a very warm welcome to the European School of Physiotherapy because that's what hopefully you're all here for. Uh, at least we are and we're many. Um, so the first thing I would like to do before I go on with the presentation is to introduce you to the ESP people that are currently here. So I would like to ask the most important ones to step up for, uh, forward first and that is our students. So if you could quickly come to the front so then I can quickly introduce you so that you know who to speak to after this presentation is over. Over here, actually not officially a student anymore, uh, Mr. Stelios from Greece. He just graduated so he knows everything about the ESP program. He will receive his diploma in um, one and a half weeks from now. This is Edward from Canada, um, currently in the second year, correct? Uh, Alice from Italy, first year student. Bertie from France, also first year student. Uh, Karen from Ireland, and she's in her fourth year currently. And there is Lucia, and she's from Slovakia, and also currently a first year student. So definitely for everyone here, feel free to contact them after the presentation is over for all the questions. And they will also uh, be able to take you through the building for a tour so that they can show you everything that you need to know and tell you the real story and not the official story that I'm going to tell you right now. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. And the second group I would like to introduce are my colleagues. So also I would like to ask them to quickly step forward so that you know literally which name goes with which face and that you also know where you can uh, contact them for. Shall I start with you, Miraya? Yeah. If you come to me, please. No, no. This is Miraya Bogas from the International Office and also the Internship Office, so she can give you all sorts of information on those two uh, aspects. Um, so feel free to contact her. Yeah. Okay, then uh, Marlene Kohler, um, team coordinator, very important for us, and also a lecturer in some courses and a mentor. Sebastian Muller, former student and currently a lecturer in the next semester that's coming up. Francesca Bocello uh, from Italy, by the way, and uh, Sebastian is originally from Germany, right? Um, and uh, she's also a lecturer with us, former student. And next to her, Jesse Arde, he is um, uh, also a lecturer currently and a PhD uh, student uh, doing interesting research. And on the very end, we have Aviv, and he is our uh, expert on uh, social media and our uh, online activities. Former student also, physiotherapist, therapist, so a multi-talent. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And of course, Bastian, which you cannot see behind the camera, so very important today. One of our famous anatomy lecturers from uh, this year on, and also a former student. So you will see him online uh, a little bit later. All right, thank you. So to get to the, uh, to the content. So uh, the European School of Physiotherapy is uh, a relatively small program within the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences, which has buildings all over Amsterdam. Uh, we're here in Amsterdam Southeast, and in our building we also have other related uh, professions such as nursing, occupational therapy, exercise therapy. And uh, as you may have noticed, right across the street we have the Academic Medical Center, the hospital, which also has a department literally inside this building, which you can find just around the corner. So that shows that in this building we have several professions and we are a very small part uh, in this building. So in this presentation I will quickly show you the program and I will tell you something about the administration, uh, a little bit about the profession because that is actually not the real goal for me at least. Uh, as we are looking for students that already know that they want to become a physiotherapist. And I think that's definitely important to mention and that already shows the difference between ESP students and typical Dutch bachelor students. So we're looking for students that already have a clear idea what they want and um, are just about to decide whether ESP is the right choice or that they should choose another program. Um, 
Yeah, like I said already, welcome to Amsterdam. So that is one of the reasons for some students that uh, were interesting. But uh, above all, the, um, uh, the international aspect of the ESP program is what most students are here for. And that's what really creates this unique uh, environment, in, um, in my opinion, and what makes it a joy um, to work here. So in short, um, I'm not going to go through all these items, but uh, we're an intense program. That's number one. And uh, we're a Bachelor of Science with the uh, addition uh, of an honors program. So that shows the level and it also shows that it's a lot of hard work. So that's what you have to uh, know from day one. Um, we try to obviously have the international aspect showing in everything we do, which is already uh, happening because of the mix of students. I will show you a map on the next slide that shows that we are really yeah, um, accommodating all students from all over the world, not only from Europe, but also from other countries. What is important for us is a couple of fundamental values. For example, evidence-based practice, which means that we're really trying to push in the scientific reason, uh, background, uh, the evidence to get the best uh, treatments for the patients. But also in our education, we're constantly trying to force you, hopefully in the future, uh, to use research in order to make uh, the best decisions as a physio. Um, we're trying to mix up the theory and practice, which is not always easy because we have, uh, I will show you later, 240 credits of our program. And we try to have a mix of theory and practice. Sometimes students are saying we need more practice, but we still want to give you enough theoretical uh, basis because then uh, we feel that the end result will be better. So um, it's definitely a mix, but the theoretical part sometimes is really challenging for uh, many students. The last point I want to mention is the fact that we're trying to uh, also be a sort of a family. Um, students are sometimes far away from their relatives, so they stick together, but uh, also with the lecturers we try to stay in close contact with them, so we also organize social events to to stimulate this and to really yeah, get personal contact. Uh, and we definitely need to know everyone by name from day one. So that uh, hopefully also shows in the future for you if you decide to come. Yeah, so this is really the most, yeah, the unique point of the ESP program, in my opinion, the international classroom. This is a map that shows the current origin of all our students. Um, I don't know exactly, but I think it's about 20 to uh, 25 different nationalities that we have in our program. And that already gives a very unique atmosphere and really makes it interesting to work here, but definitely also um, to study here. As you can see, uh, Europe is definitely well represented, but also non-European countries are, um, are in, the, in the list of passports. And definitely many students have more than one passport even. So it's really interesting to see where everyone is from and what their background is. So in short, our main goal is to make you an excellent physiotherapist and we use the world, the world class uh, for two reasons. Because you have to go back into the world and show that you can also do it outside of this country. Um, but world, cl world class also refers to the level that we're aiming for. So we're really trying, we're trying to look excellent students to select first of all and then to deliver them with even higher level at the end. Which also shows if you ask people around the world when they see graduates from ESP, in general, the responses are very, um, very positive. It's an intense program because it's three years. That is something, again, to emphasize. We have a compressed program, which means we're offering the same amount of credits as a typical Dutch bachelor, but we squeeze it into three years, which makes it more intense. And uh, the level that we're after is uh, also a little bit higher. So you can do the math yourself. It will be a lot of hard work, but um, if you're able to do this, then it's really a great experience. The extended family idea I already mentioned, um, but what is important to add is that, uh, of course, we have a lot of courses we do inside school, but we also try to do things outside of the program. So social events or other related activities we're trying to do. For example, we have a snow week uh, that we try to uh, organize every week so that students and uh, lecturers and sometimes former students join in for a nice week in the Alps. But also we try to organize um, community work or other activities just to yeah, do a little bit more than, than just the, the formal parts here at school. 
A couple of years ago, we've been accredited as an honors program, which is uh, definitely nice for us because it, it proved that we're actually delivering the level that we're after. And also, we're considered to be a small scale and intensive program according to the Dutch <laughs> official accreditation body. And that is also emphasizing the fact that we're really trying to be yeah, this extended family with good connections between students and lecturers in order to create a safe environment because that's what really matters if you're from whatever country you have to feel safe here in order to be able to go through such an intense program so that shows uh, a little bit of our uh, program um, Stelios if you would be so kind to come forward because I would like to ask you something. Um, the video is also available online via the YouTube channel, but I think it's nicer to ask him in person. Like I said, you're just, well, graduated, right? Uh, in, in one and a half weeks, you will get your diploma. Can you quickly uh, give everyone an idea about the profession from your point of view, why you enjoy it, I guess? Yeah, the profession for me is the perfect combination of two things. It's uh, the science of healing and the art of caring. These two things are combined in, in your everyday work. So you, you build up the theoretical knowledge about how the human body works and all these things that we learn at school. And then you go into the practice and you start caring and taking care of the others and make them able to move again. This is what you actually do every day. And this uh, is a very holistic approach of the profession, in my opinion. Thank you. Okay. If you have any other questions, then uh you know where to find him, so mm -hmm. definitely ask all these questions also to the other students to get their, their opinion. Um, so now we're getting a little bit more into detail to give you uh, something about the program. Um, for the people that are here, also on the table, you can see in the next slides some information that is already uh, in front of you. Everyone has completed the form. Uh, one, once you came in. Uh, that means that you will also get an email from me tomorrow if you've left your email address there with the same info so also all the slides and everything so if you don't want to write things down don't worry it will be sent to you afterwards so uh, in short we have 80 credits a year because we're fitting in 240 credits in three years time in the first part uh, officially in Dutch it's called the propedeutic phase we're covering all sorts of courses uh, theoretical courses uh, practical courses in order to give you a good idea and also for us to check if you have the right level once you've passed the first year completely, we're confident that you will also be successful later and then uh, you will have 180 more credits, which are about all sorts of different courses and most importantly, a big chunk is about the internships. So the clinical internships is where you will literally go to a practice or a hospital or a rehab center somewhere in the world to do a 10-week placement so that you really can apply everything that you've learned at school in a real setting and that's repeated uh, three more times so that at the end you have seen different settings different countries different systems yeah and then we know that you'll be fine and uh, you can graduate so if i take it one step further then you can see right here the overview of our program which means that um, you can see that we have three different years year one year two and year three in each year we have different semesters and normally a semester is about 20 weeks, so 20 weeks first semester, 20 weeks second semester, in which we're offering courses here at school. So sometimes in this room we do practical uh, classes such as assessment or we're talking about the spine or uh, about how to test the knee. That is something that happens in these kind of small sessions. We also have lectures on anatomy or biomechanics or pathology. And then uh, that repeats also for the second semester, but the themes change a little bit so that we focus on a different type of patient in different semesters so that at the end of your program you've covered the well the, the the majority of the patients that are out there as you can see already in year one there's an internship scheduled in summer so that shows also the intensity because there's no real break so you have to move on in order to do your internship in the summer and then you return back to school at the start of the second year and then you again have a short semester here at school with courses again, uh, theoretical courses, practical courses, but then a little bit more in depth, so a little bit higher level. The patients uh, that you're going to study are neurological patients, which by definition makes it already a little bit more challenging. And then there's internship two already to apply everything that you've learned from uh, the semester before. Then another short semester for a really complex type of patient so that you really have to consider, well, everything like Stelius was saying, 
every aspect you need to be able to um, to handle and then you have internship number three which is followed by a summer that is for ESP standards quite low in terms of the workload so we have some online courses that we're offering but we do allow you to go back home or go somewhere uh, because you're not depending on us to be physically here so that gives you a little bit more uh, flexibility um, to see family and to do other things um, that are important to you because once you get back to school at the start of the third year it's again uh, a lot of work that needs to be done for the minor that I will explain a little bit more about later and the thesis and they happen at the same time in that semester that's important to be here again and then the last internship, internship number four, uh, is scheduled, which is very important for you to prove, um, so that you can prove in an internship that you are at the right level to graduate. And if you do, then with a couple of courses at the end, you will be done in July 2020. Just so you know, if you want to make uh, long-term planning, then you can write the, the date already in. So you will be class 2020 if you sign up for September, for start in September 2017. If you have questions about this later, feel free to ask, but for now I just want to show you the last level of detail for today, um, then I will stop. This is our credit table, and for many people this is uh, nice because then they can at least recognize what type of courses and subjects we're offering. So what you can see in this overview is that at the end it's 240 credits, and uh, they're distributed over different semesters as you can see. Each column represents the semester. So semester one and two, and then a summer, semester three and four, and so on until the end. And if you read down, uh, you can see that we have first a couple of courses that are listed under the category of basics. And then we have some courses listed as skills. Some courses that fall under the line of clinical reasoning. And then last, we have a line of the professional, as we call it, in which, for example, you see courses such as the internship, the thesis and some other big projects that fall on a deadline. If you read across, for instance, here for anatomy, this is the logic. So for semester one, you can see number five. That means that we're assigning five credits to anatomy one in the first semester. So that shows the workload for that course. And according to the European system, one credit equals about 28 hours of work for the typical student. So you can do the math about how much work that would be uh, on average per week. And then again for the second semester, another course of anatomy for five credits. And then later in semester four, we have a one credit course of anatomy three to top it off and then uh, anatomy is done. So for the other courses, you can see in some semesters, a course or a subject is not offered. Uh, but in total, it's 240 credits in three years time. Um, if you look at the number of credits, then you can see also that we also value the internships as the most important part. Um, 53 credits out of the total are assigned to your clinical placements because that's really where you can get the best experience because that's the real, the real work that you need to do. Um, so you can see that over there. Everything that falls under this line of the professional is um, also where you have a little bit more freedom than in the other courses. Because if you look at the basics, then you can see the typical courses such as, such as anatomy, pathology, uh, physiology, pharmacology. Those courses are already set by us. We tell you what you should study and what we will examine you on. The same thing for the practical courses. For example, for interventions, we tell you what type of interventions we think you should know about and be able to perform as a physio assessment, other courses, it's the same thing. But here you have a little bit more freedom because the internships are well, at least uh, partially the, um, to decide by you where you want to go, what setting, what country, etc. The same thing is true for elective credits. We have a couple of credits that basically are free for you to spend on a certain course that you're interested in, to specialize in a certain direction or to do something else, just to build up your career already. And I think that's something you should realize already from today. Uh, usually the good ESP students already think a couple of years ahead. So if you want to know, if you know already where you want to end up as a professional, then you know already right now what choices you need to make. And that starts with the choice of ESP, yes or no, but also the internships and uh, things less like the thesis or the minor that gives you the options to make a good planning. What I think is a very, very um, uh, amazing thing that we're currently running is a connection of this minor uh, to a master's degree following ESP. 
and uh, I can give you more info via email if you're interested, but uh, we're currently running a, um, the first uh, pilot for two students to offer them courses that are required by the FU University here in Amsterdam as a minor, so that if students graduate from ESP, they can be accepted automatically to this master in musculoskeletal physiotherapy here in Amsterdam. And then it's only a one-year program in order to complete the Master of Science in Physiotherapy. So if you look at the international the requirements, that is a huge uh, advantage. Not only in terms of the content, the level is high, but also it only takes then four years to complete a Master of Science if you first complete three years of ESP with one more year following. So that's something that we're working on currently, and we will publish something on our blog very shortly to give you more info. Um, but it's also a possibility for you to choose a, a little bit more practical minor here in school to specialize in a certain direction. So that gives you a little bit of freedom, like I said, together with the thesis, which is a, a big project that you have to write also uh, in order to prove that you have the right level at the end. As far as I'm concerned, this is more than enough details for now. If you're interested in more, then... Let us know, but um, yeah, I think this is um, more than enough for now. Alice, if I may ask you something. So, I would like to know from you why you've chosen for ESP, because, well, that's maybe something that uh, other people may benefit from. Um, yeah, hi. Uh, has, like, Bastel already you? It's really intense program, and I'm from Italy, so I discovered this program in a website and from other ESP <coughs> students and it's really hard and you have to study a lot like I'm first year so I studied three months ago yeah and I've had already th five exams and until Christmas we have other ten exams or something like that but the, the really good things is that you what you're studying you practice also so it's for example you have anatomy and you have applied anatomy so and you can palpate and massage another student and you're touching what you're studying. So it's really, I think it's easier to learn with, if you practice that. But you have to consider that you have a lot of assignments and you have a lot of hours to study. Library is our new second home and all three hours we practice with other students. Maybe we ask other students from other years to help us. And our mentor, because we have like gr uh, small groups, and with our mentor, we we plan our career after ESP. So if you're really sure to do to become a physiotherapist, I think this is a really good program. Thank you. You're welcome. If you have any questions, then uh, you know where to find her. Yeah. So. Uh, some of these things have been addressed already. Um, to emphasize about the internships, uh, they're meant to be abroad because we're already offering a program in the Netherlands, so we intend to be international, so we really want to send you away uh, for a real internship in, well, your own country maybe, or another country where you're interested in, just to give you the different systems especially, because healthcare is organized in such different ways in different countries that's very important to see the differences. You will learn much more uh, from this. So we have formulated also a couple of rules, for example, to push you to actually uh, do this. And finally, any internships, especially in the last one, everything should be integrated so you should be able to treat the patient with everything that you've learned from anatomy until the reasoning in clinical reasoning and the well the the, the tests that you have done you have to put everything to to practice uh, literally um, Finally, if you look at the, um, uh, the, the position that uh, former students take now, currently, you can see that's a lot of different things. What is not even listed is that some of them also turn out to be colleagues. One, two, <laughs> three, and four. So you can see already that some uh, like it so much that maybe after a year somewhere else they come back to us and say, hey, uh, shall we be colleagues and uh, teach the next generation together? So that's, I think, what really shows a uh, nice yeah, the nice um, contact that we have with m many of our uh, alumni. Um, yeah, like I said already, so uh, Alice already answered some of these questions. So if you have more detailed questions, especially if they're outside of this room or when we are not around, ask them what their experience is so that you really get the true uh, info and maybe the, the tips and tricks already about how to get through the selection day or whatever you're interested in. Um, yeah, so physiotherapy is a 
practical profession, uh, obviously, but it requires a lot of theoretical knowledge as well and good reasoning. And that is something that a lot of you should realize. So, of course, you have to be able to treat patients, communicate well, have the right skills, but you also have to need the right attitude. You need to be critical. So that is also what we're expecting from you to really be critical towards yourself in order to, um, yeah, to, to get better. Um, so you have to put a lot of effort in also the theoretical and the scientific parts on top of the, the practical work that you need to do. <coughs> that was content, mainly. Uh, what's very important for you, if you're seriously interested, is the, uh, the official administration part. And that is listed over here. And all details are also on our website. So definitely for the official info, check the website if you're not sure. The most important thing to highlight is the deadline for application. Because if you miss this one, then yeah, uh, there's not much we can do. So the deadline is uh, January 15, 2017. So it's quite soon. It's uh, earlier than last year. So if you have older dates in mind, please remember before January 15, preferably next week, but uh, definitely before that deadline, you need to do two things. First of all, you need to go through the official platform that is called StudiLink. It's a Dutch platform uh, that is um, uh, the platform for all students to sign up through if you want to study in the Netherlands. There you can find European School of Physiotherapy and you can click and enter all your um, personal information. Second, you need to go and fill out the application form that can be downloaded from our website and email this directly to us. And you can see the email address over there. The application form is very important for us because it's the starting point of the selection process. So with this application form, you're asked to fill out your motivation, your, your background, just for us to get an idea of what kind of students uh, we're getting. And then we use it as a starting point for the interviews that we have during the selection day. And then later we can decide, once we've seen everything, uh, which students we will select. Because that's the way it works. It, as you can see in capitals, um, we have a selection day scheduled in March here in this building, here in Amsterdam. And everyone that applied in time and meets our official requirements regarding the diploma will be invited for this selection day. So if you're sure that you've done everything in time or you will do everything in time, write down uh, March 18, that's on a Saturday right here. And on the selection day, we have some interviews. And for these interviews, like I said, we have this application form, but uh, it's about two lecturers that will ask you about your motivation and why you want to become a physiotherapist and what your ideas are about studying, what your strategies are, just to get an idea about the type of students that we're after, uh, that we're, yeah, we want to get certain students uh, that can, for example, plan well. Because in ESP, you have to be able to uh, be a good planner. Long term, short term, uh, you have to be motivated. You have to know exactly what the profession is about because from day one it will be intense. So um, those are some important things for the selection day to keep in mind. And during the selection day there is also a exam, a written exam, also to test how well you would do in the same type of exam during the first semesters. So those components will give us uh, a score and based on that score we will rank everyone and then we will just uh, simply select the first 80 from that list. That's the way it works. So what is important for you is that if you're motivated, you do everything in time. You submit the application form and wait for <coughs> invitation for the selection day, uh, which is already set. So if you know that you will be there, then you can schedule your trip already. For the people that are from non-European countries or have very, very uh, reasonable reasons why physically it's impossible for them to be here, we're also offering a Skype uh, option. Um, so you can apply for this option by sending me personally an email. You can find my details on the website. And uh, so that uh, should accommodate everyone that is interested and give everyone a fair chance. That's how we've done it for the last couple of years and it, it works fine for us. Uh, it's quite stressful. You can ask them uh, to be here physically a whole day. But yeah, that's also part of ESP. You have to be able to handle stress on several occasions, I would say. Um, a couple of highlights before I finish up. Um, the introduction week is very important for us because then we get to see you for the first time. So the first week of the program is called the introduction week. 
it's officially the week before the academic year starts, just to get a real good connection with everyone. Content-wise, it's already a start because, well, anatomy, for example, is actually starting a little bit earlier even than this, but also socially, we want to make sure that everyone knows each other so that there's no delay uh, in the first couple of weeks uh, for practical things and getting to know everyone that should be done uh, earlier. But it's a nice week always. We have some uh, nice um, dinner together and we have some uh, activities. We do some real clinical sessions where there's a patient coming in already in that first week. So it's a nice mix. Other things that we do, like I said already, we have some community work that we try to organize so that students also do something for the city of Amsterdam and make, yeah, uh, do something in return for what they're getting from Amsterdam. Like I said, the snow week is coming up shortly, which is always, yeah, good for uh, stories and memories that uh, will stay forever. Uh, lectures sometimes are forgotten the next week, but usually those kind of memories will stay, and I think that's, that's also nice to have. And some other typically Dutch events sometimes we try to organize to also give people a little bit more idea about the Dutch culture, because yeah, even though everyone is from all over the world, they need to know about the Dutch um, uh, activities such as biking and skating, but also socially about Sinterklaas and uh, whatnot. That's it. Um, as far as I'm concerned for now, for the uh, official part, for the general information. So if you have any questions, first of all, ask them right now. That's one. If you have questions later, then there's different ways that you can contact us. If you go through the official website, then you can find the information that leads you to Mireille, amongst others. Uh, the international office, so they can refer you to the right person if needed. Um, you can email me, I have my card here if you want to, so that is also fine for content questions. If you have questions about the administration, then sometimes we need to refer you. Um, yep. Yes, so if you have any questions, then feel free to ask right now. If other people can benefit from this, then it's definitely nice to ask them right now. So go ahead and then I'll go to you right after. So about the application, because uh, what is listed there now, I didn't see the language exam that we have to like have a link for you. Okay. Yeah, good question. I'm just going to repeat the question. So you're asking about the language test or the requirements uh, that we're setting. Yeah. So on the website, you can see that there's two official requirements, one for the diploma level and the other one for the English level. And for the English level, we have set the level to be an IELTS 6.5 or an equivalent. So if you do an IELTS test and you get a score of 6.5 or above, then you can just submit that proof. If you have another type of exam, for example, Cambridge certain level or something else that is comparable at least to the same uh, 6.5 on the IELTS, then that will work too. But that language exam has to be internationally accepted, right? Yes, it should, it should be an official uh, exam uh, with an official, from an official um, company or institute uh, so that you can submit this as official proof in the package that needs to be sent to our administration. And they can check then and confirm if it's accepted or, uh, or not. And the result has to be, I, I already have to have the result by January 15. Yeah, so the idea is that for every document, the deadline is January 15. Uh, if there's very good reasons why, for example, you have a small delay, I would say contact us as soon as you know and also when you do plan to have it because uh, if we have it before the selection day, it can still be absolutely no problem. So just inform us about when then you would have it and also what the level is so then we know already, okay, it's going to be fine if we get the proof. So that's a way for you maybe to, uh, to handle this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Well, the difference in the degree is um, officially that we're a Bachelor of Science uh, with honors, because we're an honors program. It's not in, in, it's not in for No, no. As far as I know, at least, uh, it's a Bachelor of Science uh, as a standard uh, Dutch bachelor degree. Um, yeah, I can only say more about ourselves. I don't want to make the real comparison. Uh, I don't think that's fair. But uh, what we're offering is a complete program in English from day one separate from the Dutch program. So the Dutch program here in this building has a different setup, not only because it's four years, but also content-wise than we have. But, but you talk about the language, but also then the degree, you say it's a Bachelor of Science, so the other 
So uh, basically all physiotherapy programs, so your question is do uh, other Dutch physio schools offer a Bachelor of Science? Yes they do. So that's uh, a national government decision about uh, assigning a title to a group of um, uh, universities in a certain field. So in the entire uh, country, Bachelor of Science is awarded to every physiotherapy program at bachelor level. We are recognized by the HVA as an honors program, which is because we're delivering students at a slightly higher level, sometimes much higher, but at least a higher level than uh, the typical Dutch bachelor student in physiotherapy in our country. So then you have the same level as international uh, careers like in the UK, for example? It depends. Uh, if you're asking what the comparison is to other countries, for example, the UK, then it's hard to say um, uh, in general, but in some countries we know from our experience and definitely if we send students on internships that in some countries our students are almost at the level of a master's student uh, that are practicing physiotherapy in, for example, Canada or in uh, some other countries. So, yeah, uh, that's not the official answer, but at least from our experience and the feedback we get, uh, our students are really above the standard bachelor level at graduation. And we like to push it up even further if possible. Yeah. Yeah. Does it answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, please. Sorry, I missed the introduction. So first of all, I wanted to ask if there's uh, anything else that we are going to attend, like a uh, group class or... If you uh, can speak Dutch, so the question is can we attend some sort of a practice uh, lesson or so? Um, the Dutch program does have sessions as a demo class. We don't have that right now uh, because we're only here in this room. Uh, what we will offer though to give you like a sneak uh, preview into our program is in a couple of weeks from now we will offer something online on our blog. So if you follow it uh, in a couple of weeks then you will find a little bit more about how our courses are set. Um, so for today, no. But in the future, then in that yes. Let's ask them so if you have some questions that are interested for everyone. I think it's nice that I can reply. The compulsory of the attendance, uh, do we have to attend all the lessons or is that a percentage? Is there some courses that don't require? Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. So the question is about the attendance, whether you should attend every class at school, uh, whether there's a certain percent that you need to get at least. Well, the simple answer is uh, we want you to be here all the time if we have something scheduled, but I think you could expect that answer already. Uh, for some uh, theoretical courses, we don't keep track of attendance or at least we don't have a very strict number of classes you need to attend, uh, but definitely in some practical courses, for example, if you need to practice with a fellow student, you need to be here because otherwise also your fellow student is suffering from it. So there we do have strict uh, attendance requirements, yes. Um, yeah, those are the main two categories. And then we also have courses that are offered online, which is also a little bit different in terms of attendance. So if you're asking me the simple answer, then for some courses, yes, for sure, requirements. For some courses, uh, a little bit easier. No, uh, good question. So the question is if the study materials are covered as part of the tuition fee. No, they're not. So the tuition fee is to be accepted as a student and to get, well, everything that you basically need in terms of our service. But the books you should buy uh, yourself. Uh, you need definitely a laptop or whatever device to work on for, well, almost everything nowadays. So that is something that you need to take care of yourself and definitely do that before you come in. Uh, so that also uh, you don't. Yeah, so we have a library in which you can borrow books. Uh, what I can send to you, um, if you've left your email address in the form, I can give you additional info. If you need more info than what I'm going to send you there, feel free to ask. We have a book list, for example, that I can add to the email so that you can already see what kind of books we're using currently in our first year, and then you can already see what what is expected. Lessons, but then the in, uh, 
Well, the official rules say that you can do one internship out of the four in the Netherlands. That's it. And um, so that is the answer. Yeah, yeah. And um, you can definitely uh, do two internships in a certain country, two in, in Italy, one in Germany, one in the Netherlands, for example. That will be a nice mix. So it ha doesn't have to be four different countries. But uh, yes, the internships internationally are one of our best uh, kept rules, let's say, for good reasons. Yes. Yeah, is that good enough for now? Okay, thank you. Yes. Thinking long term, you said you have a link up to carry on and do a master's. Um, is that in Dutch? Because my Dutch is very lacking. No, that's in English. That's a very good question. So the question is, is the master following ESP uh, in Dutch? No. So it's the master that is offered by the FU uh, University here in Amsterdam. And uh, currently two of our students have, uh, are in this minor in English also. So the pre-master courses we're offering or they're offering to our students are completely in English. The degree afterwards one year is also completely in English, so it would make a nice package. It is nice though to learn some Dutch while you're here, but that's not related to this question. Uh, but just in general, to just find your way around school sometimes that can be helpful. But also if you just want to meet some people, it's nice if you can speak a few words. Um, and this is something that we're also trying to offer with a uh, Dutch course for dummies, for example, in the first semester that you can sign up for because that will make your life here in Amsterdam a lot easier, even though many people speak English, but yes. So, cool. Thank you, Bill. there you go. Very good. Uh, yes. About how many people tend to apply for, for Yeah, so last year we had approximately 200 people on our application list. Um, and out of those 200, at least 150 or 60 were actually part of the selection day and from those we selected uh, 80. So yeah, last year and also the year before it was about 50% from the original list that we could select. What it's going to be this year? We'll see. Does that number go up, uh, assuming there are about 300 applicants this year and you probably take 200 people? Interview. So that number 80 of you go to 100 or does it? No, so if the, your question is, is the number going up if we have more applicants? No, because one of the um, uh, unique aspects of ESP is that we're a small scale program. And looking at the amount of people we have, we cannot really handle more currently. And also we don't really want to because then we may lose this personal touch. And I think that's very important for us. So this 80 will stay, but we definitely want to fill the 80 completely. Uh, so depending on how many applicants we have, it's harder or easy, but um, those, that 80 will be kept, yes. Yes. Average age. Average age, yeah, that's a very good question. So I didn't ask them about their age, but on average the age is uh, about 24 when they come in. Compared to the typical Dutch student that is about 18 when they start their bachelor degree. Yeah, so the question is, is it not difficult for younger people eh, if, if they have to get into such an intense program? Sometimes it may be, but we also know, and definitely you can ask them uh, about their experiences, but uh, many of our students, even though they're younger, have a lot of life experience usually. And uh, prior education, sometimes they've done somewhere else. Other people have done a certain career somewhere else. Um, but still, some people are quite young when they come in, but because of the mix, they will easily blend in. At least in my opinion, uh, that works quite well. And we also have people that are above 40 sometimes that are in the program, uh, compared to a couple that are 18 and just graduated from high school and then moved straight to ESP. So it's really a mix. On average, a couple of years or five years uh, older than, than the typical Dutch uh, student. And that adds up to the different cultures and the different backgrounds. The age definitely will make it even more interesting to, to be in this classroom, I think. You know everything that you wanted to know for now? Or you don't want to ask me, that's fine too. So um, thank you very much for your attention. Like I said already, please make sure that you have completed the form with your email address because then tomorrow you will get another email from me with a follow-up and some additional information on, for example, the books that you would be interested in to see and administrative questions. So if you leave the room, make sure that your form was completed. And uh, we're here for questions, so if you want to get a tour, then uh, we will just gather just outside of this 
building or building outside of this room uh, and some of our students will take you through the building and show you around. If you have questions for some of our lecturers or some of the students, feel free to stay. Thank you and um, Thank you. hopefully uh, we will see you then uh, around March and then uh, ultimately in August. Thank you. Thank you.